welcome to Let's Meet the Virologists, a podcast about the people behind today's virology headlines, people working to understand viruses and how they affect you. We are talking with virologists, students, and postdocs that belong to the American Society for Virology so that you can learn who they are and what they do. I am Larissa Thackeray, and I am hosting this podcast from America's Heartland in St. Louis, Missouri. On December 15th, 2021, we talked with Eva Ogre, a graduate student at University of La Reunion at La Reunion Island and in France. She received her master's in biology and health at University of Reunion Island. She is currently investigating the role of the non-structural protein one or NS1 in the pathology of epidemic strains of dengue virus. Thanks for talking with us uh, today. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, I'm pleased to speak with you today. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. So um, I'm Ogereva. I'm a PhD student at PIMIT, a research uh, lab interest in infectious processes in tropical islands environment located in Rhenan Island and at the Syrie. It's an international center for research in infectious diseases located in Lyon in France. And actually, I'm a temporary lecturer and research assistant at the University of Rhenan Island. So uh, I'm a French, as you can hear with my accent. I come from Rhenan Island. It's a French department located in the South Indian Ocean near to the South Africa and Madagascar. It's a French department with a multitude of landscape uh, between sea and mountain. It's ideal for holiday. And uh, it's a hotspot of biodiversity and uh, with uh, a population with a multi multiple of origins. And uh, this French department is located in a subtropical area with a high prevalence of uh, flavivirus infection, such as uh, chikungunya and dengue virus, unfortunately. So why don't you take us back and uh, uh, tell us a little bit about how did you first become interested in science and then virology? How did that happen for you? Yes, concerning my uh, ba background, uh, I, I have a technician certificate in medical biology analysis, uh, analysis uh, and uh, I have a bachelor's degree in biochemistry and a master's degree in um, biology and health. And uh, following my high school degree, I completed a technical certificate. And it's uh, during these studies, I discovered virology. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I, when I, uh, professors speak about uh, the viruses, I asked myself uh, how something as nanoscopic, so little, can cause so damage to human uh, uh, up to death. It's really, I found it fascinating. Uh, this really uh, piqued my interest and my curiosity, so I decided to continue to study in biology uh, to learn more about viruses. Did you have people in your family that were in the sciences or medicines, or why did you decide to go that way? No, absolutely no. I'm the first in my family to do to the to do study at the university. So uh, it's really I discovered that during my uh, technician certificate, and I. It's, I found that amazing, so I decided to, push, to continue. Uh, so when I, um, when I think about it, it's, uh, it's funny because when I was a teenager, I didn't want to uh, do long study. I wanted to, to quickly uh, enter into a working life, to have a job, to, to earn money, you know. And uh, now, after eight years, I'm still a student, so it's funny when I remember that. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a long road of education. Yes. So speaking of that, why don't you tell us a little bit about then how you found, are you a graduate student now or a postdoc? What is your position now? No, I'm a grad, I don't have my PhD. I will defend her in uh, the next year, the beginning okay. of 2022, okay. I hope. So uh, how did you end up in then your PhD lab? How did you end up choosing that lab? What was that process like? So yes, uh, I chose PIMIT because uh, I wanted to do virology. I wanted to develop uh, my knowledge in this field. And during my master's degree, PIMIT was working and they are still working on Zika virus, so uh, which caused a global epidemic in 2015 and which was perfect for my goals. 
So I applied for an internship and that confirmed my uh, my interest to virology and research. So I continue with this lab. I had the opportunity to do a PhD with uh, in this lab and I it was perfect for, for me. And um, can you tell us a little bit about what your lab's like, sort of like what the size of it is, what the composition, is it PhD students, undergrad students, you know, who's in your lab? Yes, PIMIT is divided in two teams. We are a team who work especially on biology cells, the mechanism of infectious, the host really, and we are another team work about the more about the vector. The, for example, we have uh, people work about coronavirus. We have a population of bats on our island, and they study that before the, the pandemic. We have uh, we study the vector, the mosquitoes. We have, uh, especially in Green Island, Aedes albopictus, not Aedes aegypti, and we study that. We we try to do uh, to work together with the um, um, exchange to share uh, data about the out the human and the vector and the virus. Uh, we have a lot of lecturer and researcher, and we have a lot of PhD students like me and technician, uh, and uh, we work really together. Can you tell us a little bit about your, your PhD research then? So sort of like, what is yes. the, I guess the hypothesis you're testing? And then maybe what are some of the experiments that you use, like the different techniques that you use in your studies? Okay. Yes, my PhD subject uh, was developed following the emergence of dengue virus in uh, our in my island in uh, 2018. Since the, uh, 2018, Rhineland Island have been uh, has been suffering from a huge dengue epidemic, and that hasn't stopped uh, since, notably with the circulation of several serotypes. And the outbreak has begun with the serotype two after we had the serotype one, and we are we reported uh, some sporadic case of the serotype three. So we have three serotypes in circulation to four for the dengue virus. So our lab will decide to study um, this uh, dengue virus, especially the strain in circulation in our island. For my PhD, I'm studying the NS1, the non-structural protein one of dengue virus from the epidemic strain of Rhineland Island. It's a dengue virus 2, uh, serotype 2, cosmopolitan lineage. And uh, why NS1? It's because uh, NS1 is the only secreted protein of this virus. So it's, this protein is present in the bloodstream with the virus during the infection. NS1 is a multifunctional glycoprotein during the viral infection. I work on recombinant protein, and after the goal is to uh, study the virus in uh, totally. But I begin with uh, recombinant protein because I study, I make a comparison. I do uh, the first, I focus on the biochemical study of the NS1 protein. I was able to publish uh, an article um, on this subject where I show that the presence of lysine residues at the position 372, 324, uh, impact the level expression of the NS1 protein from the epidemic strain of Rhineland Island in comparison to another uh, NS1 uh, from the strain of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania in the same zone in Genocean. And the second part, I try to focus on the impact of these two NS1 on pathogenesis, more specifically uh, on the uh, endothelial cells because NS1 protein is described to, for having a role in viral pathogenesis and impact the hyperpermeability of endothelium layer. In the literature, the, the strain, it's a really the strain of Asia, America, who, uh, that we are studies, studied. We don't have a lot of uh, data uh, information of the Southwest Indian Ocean strain, our one their behavior and uh, since few here now, we have uh, active circulation is in this uh, area. So it's very really important to study the strain of uh, this area. So do you think that there's enough variation between different NS1s that they may have different um, biological properties? Is that the idea? Yes, I think because, for example, in my study, I compared just two NS1 and I we observe just four amino acid substitution, and this just four amino acid substitution have a big impact on the level of expression. For example, level NS1 from Rhineland Island dengue 
is uh, uh, really less is lesser expressed by the NS1 of Darren Salam, and you are just two uh, four mutation, and it can impact the level. And we know you have a correlation between the level of NS1 expression present in the blood and the um, severe form of dengue. So perhaps just four amino acid substitution have an impact after on the pathogenesis, the, the disease developed by the patient after. So can you just discuss a little bit, when you say pathogenesis, you know, NS1 in people, what exactly is the NS1 believed to be doing? Yes, NS1, uh, in literature, you have um, NS1 have different role. You have the antibodies of NS1 uh, can make a mimicrism of uh, some protein of our protein, for example, the plaquette, and then participate uh, to the destroy of plaquette and after you can uh, leading to hemorrhagia. Uh, you have the NS1 can be uh, recognized by the TLR4 of the endothelium cells and uh, activate a cascade of uh, secretion of cytokine and participate to the inflammation. Mm-hmm. And uh, this inflammation can cause the um, disruption of the interjunction of the endothelium. So you have an hyperpermeability uh, of the endothelium layer and leading to the plasma leakage. And it varies these two symptoms, hemorrhagia and plasma leakage participate really to the severe form of dengue virus. So I guess yours, it sort of sounds like you're coming towards the end of your PhD. What are your plans, um, your, your next plans? What do you, what, what do you want yeah. to do? Yes, I will defend my thesis uh, next week, in the beginning of next week, uh, next, next year, here, sorry. Oh, next year, okay. Yes, and after I want to to find a postdoc uh, abroad, I want to Canada or USA or Australia. Really, I want to go in a country who speak English because I need to improve my English. And I think the best way to improve a uh, language is to go in a country in immersion to really to to discover a new culture, new way to work in extra. And so, after I want to go uh, a postdoc in virology field. Really, I'm open for all opportunity. Really, I want to leave my highland. It's beautiful, but I want to see other country. Can you reflect a little bit? So the last uh, almost two years now has been kind of a crazy time to be a virologist with the COVID pandemic and all that. What has it been like for you there in your in your home country? As in the whole world, uh, this was an unprecedented situation, you know. Um, during the first lockdown in March 2020, uh, I wasn't on my native in the island for the first time in two unprecedented situations for me. <laughs> so um, I was in the France in Lyon at the lab uh, collaboration for mission research. So uh, this lockdown put a brutal stop to my experimentation. So I found that very frust- it was very frustrating because in a PhD time, it's so precious, and I, I lost months of experimentation. But uh, it's, uh, it's like that. And in a um, personal point of view, um, I was lucky because uh, even though I was 11 kilometers from my family, my island, I wasn't alone, alone and that was um, a change, I think. And uh, I think... Um, that being in virology's field, with the knowledge I have, uh, I was less stressed by the situation uh, than a person would discover it totally virus. What that uh, really stressed? The terms used by the the expert on TV, the headlines, newspaper, I think uh, that were more usual for me and more and less anxiety provoking. And I think in personal, I I is not a bad experience about this uh, anxiety anxiety, anxiety uh, situation for people. And I think um, the pandemic, it's, uh, you have uh, some uh, good aspect, if I can say. I think people uh, have a better understanding uh, of the value of studying uh, viruses in general uh, without waiting uh, for them to cause a pandemic, for example. They are, they are better understanding the the importance of research field, especially in virology. And then can you reflect a little bit, so what has the pandemic been like in La Reunion? 
we are a population more refract to the vaccine, but we, so the government can be more, uh, um, ask people to, to, to vaccine. Um, uh, how we, we know our fifth wave and uh, the major change week to week is really complicated to, to predict things. And especially in this end of year, you are Christmas, and we don't know if uh, with the evolution, if we can, uh, will uh, eat in family, etc. But uh, we we try to really, it's like in France, even in we are in in Ireland, but we are, for example, we are near to Mauritius uh, Island, and uh, for this time the border is closed. We can't uh, end South Africa because you are a new variant, Omicron, and we can't, we are some country, we can't go. But uh, we, I think like uh, everywhere in the world, we, we live with, uh, with the virus and we try to, to keep safe uh, our family. Right, right. Well, thank you very much for talking with us today. Thank you for taking the time to meet me. That was a real pleasure for me. This has been Let's Meet the Virologist, a podcast about people who study viruses. This is your host, Larissa Thackray, and thanks for listening. You can find us on Google, Apple, Amazon Music, and other podcast providers, or at lmtv.podbean.com.